You may have noticed these visuals I've been uploading, and I've been asking me how I create them. In this video, I'll be delving into the code behind these strange and seemingly emergent shapes that appear when you visualize some simple concepts. We'll be using a graphics programming language called Processing. I won't be going into the details of every function we use here. If you want to know more, go to processing.org reference. Every processing sketch consists of a setup and a draw function. The setup function runs once at the start of the program, and the draw function runs in a loop every frame. In our case, the setup function is only used to set the size of our canvas. We'll be mainly focusing on the draw function. First, let's set our background to a gray color. Then, let's draw a circle. We define a variable representing the radius of our circle, and we create a circle using that variable. But not before calling the nofill and the stroke function to set the circle as empty, and to make the outline white. It seems that the circle is in the wrong place. It turns out that most computer graphics frameworks use the top left pixel as the origin pixel. If we want to center our circle, we'll have to translate the whole canvas using the translate function. Now, we need to cut up the circle into a number of segments called divisions, like a pizza. First, we set a variable called divisions to let's say 10, and then we calculate the angle of each division. If the entire circle is 2 pi, then the division angle is 2 pi over the number of divisions. Let's iterate over all of our divisions. And just so we can see what we're doing, let's draw a small circle for each of them. But what x and y coordinates should we use for our small circles? To get the coordinates of the perimeter of our large circle, we can use the parametric form of the circle equation. In our case, the angle will be the current index multiplied by the division angle we calculated earlier. Let's try that in our code. And now, we have points in our circle. The idea behind these visualizations is that each of these divisions has an index, and we can use a function to map these indices from one to another. For example, let's say our function is y equals x times 2. If x is for instance 4, corresponding to the point with the index 4, then y would be 8, and we connect the two points together with a line. To do this, let's first put our coordinate calculation into a convenient function called xyposition. Let's set x of our mapping function to the index, and calculate the y. We get the coordinates of both our points, and draw a line between them. We do this for every division. This already looks quite interesting. Well, let's see what happens if we increase the number of divisions to, for example, 100. And if we change the number x is multiplied by smoothly, we can animate it. You can play around with the function to create some quite interesting visuals. For example, if we just add a fixed number to x, we get this circular pattern, and if the number we're adding is exactly half to the number of divisions, each line just goes straight across the circle. If you want to see more of these visuals, check out my YouTube shorts. And if you have any suggestions for topics I should explore in the future, feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.